My name is Agustin Martinez Fajó. I am a maintainer of the Spire project. I'm here with Marcos. Uh, hello, I'm Marcos Chaco, another of the maintainers. We are going to present this. Okay, so uh, either if you are new to Spire or if you want to learn about the new force rotation or, and revocation feature, I hope uh, that you find this presentation interesting. Um, so we will provide a very quick uh, introduction um, to Spiffy and Spire, and then we will get into the details of the uh, new support for force rotation and revocation. Um, to do that, we will uh, look at um, the different signing keys uh, that Spire, Spire can handle, um, what's the normal life cycle of the signing keys, and how you can now force the rotation of the keys. And finally, we will have a live demo of how of all this work. Okay, so let's, let's do a very, very quick overview of Spiffy. Uh, we need to talk about the Spiffy before talking about the Spire. Um, Spiffy essentially defines a framework uh, and a set of standards um, to identify and secure uh, communications between workflows. Um, in order to do that, um, it defines a few things. Uh, first, it defines how services identify themselves to each other. To do that, um, it defines uh, a form for the IDs, and that's what we call the Spiffy IDs. Um, but also, you need uh, a, some kind of document where you can put those IDs, and for that, it, it uh, defines the Spiffy verifiable identity documents where the Spiffy IDs are encoded. Once you have that, um, you also need a way to distribute um, the SVITs. Um, and for that, it defines what we call the workflow API. That's uh, an API specification that uh, defines uh, the issuance and retrieving the SBITs. Um, and finally, you also need uh, a way to verify if uh, an SBIT is valid in a trust domain. And for that, it defines what we call a trust bundle. So it um, defines the a format for representing what's the, the collection of the public keys that are in use in a given uh, SPIFI authority. Um, in addition to that, it also specifies how you can federate with other trust domains and how you can establish trust with other trust domains. So all, all that is about um, SPIFI very quickly. Now that we know about Spiffy, we can start, start talking about Spire. Um, and Spire is an implementation of the Spiffy standards that performs node and workload attestation. And for that, it has two major components that are the server and the agent. The server is the one that authenticates agents and meet S, S bits. And the agent uh, primarily uh, serve the Spiffy workflow API. That's the API that the workloads use to retrieve their identities. Okay, so let's get into um, the details of how Spire handle the signing keys. Um, the signing keys are handled by the server, and it handles two kinds of signing keys, the X509 signing keys and the J signing keys. Um, the X509 signing keys are used not only to 
issue um, the SVs to the workloads, but also for the identities of the server and the agent. And the job signing keys are used to issue identities to the workloads. The server also, like I mentioned, need to maintain a trust bundle with all the valid authorities for X509 and for the JOT SBIT. Okay, so let's see what's the normal uh, life cycle of the signing keys um, and what are the different states that a, a key can be inspired. And we will see that this is important to know in order to uh, see how you can force the rotation of a signing key. So um, when there is no active key or the current active key is expiring, uh, Spire needs to prepare a new key. Um, and when that happens, we say that uh, that key is in a prepared state. Um, and Spire makes sure that it keeps the trust bundle up updated with any new authority. Once the key has been prepared, it can be activated. So when that happens, we say that now the key is active. And if um, there was a previous active key, that means that that key will now be an old key. And we will see how uh, to know this is important because when you now can force the rotation of a key, you, you can't uh, do that like in, in any of the states. Um, we have introduced the concept of tainting a key and that means that is a way to signal Spire that a key is no longer trusted. Um, and this is important because you can't just uh, remove a key from the bundle because then you, you will break the deployment, right? Because your workloads will not be able to verify the keys because the, the, that key is not in the trust bundle. So we need to follow cer certain steps. And if you want to taint a key and in, like if you, if you want to force the rotation, um, you prepare a new key, you activate that key. So the previous uh, active key now becomes an old key and that's the time that you can now taint that key. So that uh, key will be now tainted. Um, and once uh, you are sure that um, the rotation happened throughout the cluster, you can <laughs> revoke that key. Um, because uh, Spire will take care of rotating any identity of a server that was issued by, by that tainted key. It will take care of rotating the identity of the agents that are using a tainted key. And obviously, it will uh, take care of rotating the SVs for the workloads. So w once you, you see that you have the trust bundle updated with the rotated key throughout the cluster, then you are sure that you can revoke that key. So that key will no be longer in the trust bundle. So um, as part of this work, we um, added a new uh, API that 
we call the local authority server API. Um, with this API, uh, you are now able to get what's the current state of the authorities. You can prepare, you can activate, you can taint, and you can revoke the authorities. And also we have other uh, CLI commands that uh, call the API and where you can perform all those actions. Okay, so now is the time <coughs> to show how this works. Okay. Uh, Marta, uh, as Agustin mentioned, we introduced a new API into Spire Server. That's local, local authority. That local authority allows us to get, prepare, activate, change, or rebook. JSB, so authority, sorry, uh, uh, authorities or obtain authorities. Here in this diagram, we can see the deployment we are going to use. Where we have Spire Server Nation, a Postgres <coughs> that contains Spire uh, Sidecar, that is basically a specific helper that is going to use the Google API to fetch a bit and store on disk so Postgres can use this for SSL application. The API is going to fetch from Asian 2 the expanded suite to do the authentication with Postgres and to validate the multi with the client. At the same time, it will going to get the shots uh, authorities that can be used for authentication here. The same happens with client, where the client uh, called the world API and used for multi -tilized. Okay, let's move to terminal. Not this one. So, for now, we have this part several started, and we can see we have only one authority. That is the active one. That is A, B, something. This is the authority that Spire is going to use to sign any extracurricular speed. For example, if I go and move into a Postgres, we can see that we already got the speed that is spilling in some time. Uh, we put very long numbers so we don't get into the regular rotations and it's the signet but AB09 that as you can see here is the one that is active and we are getting only one authority because as I mentioned before there is only one authority for now for ASV. in case of the API uh, and client we can see pretty much the same we can see that uh, in this one we got a speed that is signed by the same one and just speed, but we will talk about just speed later. And we got only one authority in the client. In the client, we have pretty much the same signed by this one, and we got only one authority. This one. So let me start moving things here. I'm going to prepare a new authority what we are doing here is basically we are going to the server to prepare the authority is going to prepare a new authority and propagate to the agent and the agent is going to propagate to any workload that uh, is authenticated as you can see here we now have two where the new one is 8e something and if I go into the Postgres, we can see we received two, where we received the original one here, plus the new one. So it was created and propagated. Pretty much the same for API. We received two, but you can see here there is no changes in the speed because it is already uh, provided and it's not active yet. So let me activate no this one let me activate so i activated this that's it's pretty, this is pretty simple we just move in the server and mark the prepared as active there's no changes in workload because there is no changes in the speed nothing changed the only difference is that now any new speed that is prepared prepared for the server will be used the new authority and we can see, calling again the 
zero four. We can see that we have the two, and the active is keep the same, and the all is the same. Okay, let make things move. And uh, change. Here is the important. This is. The, let's think, for example, if for some reason you want to uh, change your authority. The oldest feet that are still in your authority because maybe I don't know it was exposed, your authority is exposed, or you just are changing the current at senior authority and you want to have the new all the new videos in the new authority, or any reason you can think. For that way, we created the time as I was to mention, is a way that we are forcing that any speed is at the, is is rotated without waiting for the regular rotation that will happen in 20 by 10 to hours, something like that. So, what we are doing here is a Mart authority is no longer secure. For the rotation of the server speed, this is basically the speed that is used to do the mutual TLS with the agents. One, the agent is, is, is attested. And notify the agent. The agent is going to force the rotation of any speed that is signed using the problematic authority. And return a new speed for any uh, any workload that we have present. So you can see I already changed. If I go and move to Postgres, we can see. Let me first get this so it's clear for all of us. <coughs> we can see that the current uh, active is HE and HB was the previous activated one. So the the uh, world the speed is rotated using the AB. We have a new, um, of course. Uh, here we have a new um, expiration date because they changed it. And but we we are still getting uh, both authorities because we are marking the secure. But in our trust bundle, we already have the both of the authorities. Pretty much the same here in the, in the API. We see we, we receive two, and we see that is no singing but a E, that is the current active one. And pretty much the same here. Now, as I mentioned before, we are still getting uh, both authorities in, into the bundle, right? So a mutual DS can be successful because it is still there. So I am going to use the revocation that basically this one. We are going to communicate the server. The server is going to remove the authority, provide it to the agent, and the agent to any workload. So as soon as I move here to Postgres, we can see that the uh, it is the same, the, the speed, but we can see that the, the authorities we have only one. So the previous one was removed. Goodbye. Into the regular application, we can see pretty much the same. We receive the update on with only one, and the same from the client. So that is pretty much it about x Night. Let me move to Jot. Now first, I will open my beautiful page. I spent, you know, two months on trying to get CCS and on this. It was stressful. In any case, it was enough to demonstrate here that <coughs> we are calling the client, the client to the API, the API to the post thread, all the successful, and we got a response, the communication successful. So, and now, for example, if I go, I open the logs, we can see we have the JOTS bit here. We have only one authority because we have only one, and we got this shot. If I display the shot content, <coughs> we can see that it's signed by zero G. Let me display this before we continue. Get the active one is zero G. You can see there is only one in in the server, and it is the one that is used to sync the current uh, active JOTS bits, right? Zero B and it's been in something some hours. 
and it's for the API. If I go into the another one, that is the client, I will going to do the same so we can see it both rotated in the future. It's seen it by 0G2 and it's been in many hours. So the same way that happened in 809, we have not prepared it yet, so we need to prepare a new authority so uh, we can rotate the active one. Let me do that. Uh, sorry, yes. Okay, preparing the authority. Waiting some time. What we are doing here when we are waiting? <coughs> Pretty much the same with F F night. We are preparing, we are content server, creating a new authority, providing the agent and the agent to workloads. Uh, now it's prepared and you can see, uh, let me call my beautiful UI to reload. We can see we now have two authorities receiving for the client. 0G and RTD something. That is the current is the current active one. Uh, it is important to mention here that your bits are different to X functionality bits. X functionality bits are preparing in advance. So when a, a workload is calling to HN for this the, the bit, it is also present. But that is not possible in your authorities. That is because Agent is not able to know what audience uh, the client will need to have. Because of that, anytime we, <coughs> for a, a workload, we call to the agent, it is it, uh, basically stored in, in a cache, the speed. So we don't have to create any uh, new speed every time we call until it is about to expire. So, I prepare, let me activate this one. Now it's active. And if I reload the page, we can see here that there is no changes into into the into the into the speeds. Mm -hmm. Which one is this? The client. There is no changes. It is still seen by the same one because we updated the active one, but is the speed is still cache. So let me. I close it. <laughs> one window with error. Let me copy the API again. So we basically now activate this, so not change, but now we are going to do that the taint of that authority. <coughs> what we are doing when tainting, but the authority is not secure, going to provide to the agent and that is happened, and the agent is going to remove the tainted authority, the tainted speech from the cache. So the next time we get a call from any workload that was using that uh, chat, is going to get a new one. I already tainted, so I will reload my page. You can see there is an update here. For example, if I go into the speed for the this one. If I go here, we can see that it's signed for the for the new um, authority, and we we got a new shot speed. And pretty much the same is going to happen here uh, with API. This one. Good client. Pretty much the same. We are, it, is, it is using the new authority. 
but we are getting the same situation with exciting net bit. We are we have new shot, but the authority is still in the bundle because we are receiving both of them. For example, here in the API, we can see that we receive both of them. So to solve that, we are going to use the revocation. That is pretty much the same that's happening with extra candidate speech authority, sorry. We remove the, for the authority, provide to the agent, and for workloads. Here you can see we have only one, and if I go, for example, to API, uh, let me reload the page to see the plate already working. And if I go to uh, logs, we can see we receive only one. So that is pretty much it about for rotation. Uh, let me move to this one. Austin, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, thank you, Marcos. So yeah, there are multiple ways uh, that you can join our community. You're welcome to join us uh, in our uh, Spiffy Slack. Uh, you can find us there. Uh, you can go to the spiffy.io uh, website. You can browse the GitHub repo. Um, the presentation is already uploaded uh, in the schedule. So uh, you can find there the link uh, for, for this demo. Um, and well, I think we have some, some time for some questions. this presentation, uh, do you know any real life use cases where we want to use the tent and revoke APIs? Yeah. So, the like the most important one is uh, if you uh, one authority has been compromised uh, and then uh, you want to make sure that you, you are not signing anymore uh, using that authority. So you, you, in that case, you will taint that authority and uh, revoke it. So that's the main, uh, uh, one of the main reasons why you, you may use this feature. But it, it may not be the only one. You may just are getting a, a new signing uh, authority uh, and you uh, don't want to wait for the a normal rotation and you just want to start using the new authority. So that may be also uh, uh, a different reason why you, you may want to use this. Gotcha. And uh, something uh, important to mention is not required to use time, right? For example, if you are getting, a, as he mentioned, you created and you have a new signing authority and you only want to prepare the new, uh, the new authority, the new uh, authority, local authority in advance for some reason. So the new speed is started using that, but you don't want to worry about tainting and making sure it's provided. It can be done to, uh, along with rotation, real rotation, but you, know, you will do it uh, before that's expected. Yep. And just a short follow-up, uh, is it already launched with the new version of the Spire server? Yeah. Yes. So, mm -hmm. no, sorry. Yeah. So um, starting with version 1.11, uh, the local authority API is available and it, it can be used and it's also uh, the CLI commands there. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And as part, sorry, yeah, and as part of that also uh, through the CLI commands you can now see what are the current state of the authorities. That's something that previously was not easy to, to see. I think that is one. If, if you want to approach it to the microphone. Um, so uh, the upstream is uh, the, that part of the API um, wasn't in the demo. I'm assuming that's for the, uh, any federated Spire instances that you might have. Can you repeat please? Yeah. Uh, so the API had um, taint and revoke upstream. I'm assuming that's to push to federated Spire instances to ensure that like if, if they trust each other that you break that trust and say you need to use the new one. Uh, it, well, 
Sorry. Yeah, yes. It's, as it's the, in the case of federated, it follows the regular uh, mechanism that we have. Basically, every time you have an update in the bundle, it's propagated to any federation one. So as soon as you remove it, all the federated uh, out, uh, services will get uh, the update with, without that uh, authority. Yeah, there should be no, no change like with the normal um, uh, rotation of the keys. Any other question? Yes? Uh, why do you need to prepare the state? <laughs> yeah, so the question is why, why do we need a prepared state? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure, Marco, if you want to answer that better? Or? Yes, basically it's to prepare in advance. For example, uh, regular, regularly we're preparing any authority in advance, so it's propagated to all workloads and all agents before it is used. That is the main reason of our preparation. And we are preparing now, uh, for example, because there is no one there, uh, but for example, in case you have an obscene authority, maybe your actual prepared authority, prepared local authority is signaling a problematic one, uh, obscene authority. So you need to prepare and to be sure that the new prepared authority, local authority is signaled by the new, for the new obscene authority. That's one of the other reasons. But originally, it is a hub working the same way from the start, but it's to that, to do that, to pro propagate uh, authorities in advance. Yeah. yeah, that's the main reason, like, you, you need a way to, to say, okay, we, we have a new signing authority, uh, and before we start using it, you make sure that it, it has been propagated throughout the cluster, so all the, the trust bundle is updated with that, um, new authority. The same will happen, of course, with the federation. As mentioned before, in federation, we are propagating, and it's propagated to all federated uh, services, too, in advance. 